Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jesslyn, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a wreath brush like this. This is the same method I used to create all the brushes in my wreath brush bundle, and if you want to check that out, the link is in the description below. But let's jump into today's video. First, we're going to want to create a square canvas. I'm going to use a 24 inch by 24 inch canvas, but you can use any size you want. I would suggest about 20 inches. That's probably a really good size to make sure that you're getting a good quality image. So we're going to open our canvas by pressing the plus sign and choosing the size that we want. I already have a bunch of presets, so I'm just going to choose 24 inch square that I already have set up over there. Now that the canvas is set up, we're going to want to split it into four different sections. And we're going to do that by going to the actions menu by tapping on the wrench over here, going to the canvas tab and turning on the drawing guide. Tap edit drawing guide and it'll give you some options and then we're going to want to turn the grid size all the way up to max so that we can have our little four sections on the canvas. I'm also going to turn my thickness up and the opacity down just so that you can actually see the lines on my canvas. You don't need to do this. This is just so that you can see it so that it's nice and dark. A wreath brush is going to be made up of branches and to start we're going to draw a stem. And to do this, I'm going to use a monoline brush. I've got this big monoline brush here, which is basically just the monoline brush in the calligraphy brush set, I think, that comes with Procreate. And all I've done is I've turned the size up to maximum, and I think I've made streamline 100%, just so that it's super smooth. So that's the brush I'm using. You can honestly use any brush that you want. Um, I suggest a monoline brush because that's going to make it a bit easier. Start by drawing a line about a quarter of the way, maybe a bit more, about a quarter of the way on the canvas to about halfway through. I'm going to draw straight across this horizontal line and I'm going to tap with one finger on the canvas just to make it completely straight, make sure it's completely horizontal and I'm actually just going to move it up so that it's dead center. Next I'm going to draw some leaves, I'm going to draw one big one up at the top here and then I'm going to draw a smaller leaf at the bottom, pointing down. No, okay, let's do that again. Didn't quite like the shape. There we go. And then I'm going to color fill this in with black. If your color doesn't fill the entire object and you see these white lines when you zoom in, just make sure that your color threshold is high enough. You can just keep your pencil on the canvas and drag it to the right to increase your color threshold. Next, I'm going to create a third little leaf coming out of the stem, just on the top here and fill it in. Uh, when we actually create our brush, you're going to see that the stems will join into each other. So it's nice to have an additional leaf coming off and just gives it a little bit more dimension to the brush. Once you're happy with your branch, you need to copy the entire image. And you can do this by tapping the actions menu and tapping copy canvas, or you can swipe down with three fingers and then tap copy canvas that way on the copy and paste menu. Okay, so now we're actually going to create our brush. So open the brush menu and I'm going to just do this in my wreaths brush set. You can see that I've actually already created this brush a couple times already. But I'm going to press the plus sign to create a new brush. And that's going to open the brush studio. So now the first thing you're going to want to do is paste that image you just copied. So under shape menu and shape source, I'm going to tap edit. And then I'm going to tap import and paste and now the image we just copied is going to be shown there and because you want the image to be white on a black background I'm going to tap with two fingers to invert it because we always need the image that we're actually using to be white. Then I'm going to tap done and that's to make sure that the image actually saves. If you don't tap done it's not going to save your image that you've copied so make sure you do that. Tap done and now we've got our brush but this doesn't really look like a wreath brush so we're going to change a couple more settings and the first thing i'm going to do is head over to apple pencil and just turn the opacity down the default is always to have the opacity up under apple pencil and then you can't always tell what you're doing so i'm just going to turn that all the way down now let's go back to the shape menu and turn up the rotation all the way until it says follow stroke now we've got a brush that looks a little bit more wreath like but still not quite Next, let's turn the brush size up a little bit, so under properties, just increase the maximum size to around about 400%, just so that we can actually see what we're doing and because it'll make the brush a bit bigger. And then under stroke path, this is the fun part, where we increase the spacing. 
You can start by slowly increasing it. The goal is to get a continuous line so that the stem from the one branch leads into the stem from another and that there are no gaps in between. It's just one straight line. And you can play around with the spacing. You'll see that if you increase the spacing too much, there'll be a gap. And if you decrease it too much, they'll overlap. So the goal is to get somewhere in the middle and you might have to test it out and change the spacing a couple of times. You can also test it out on the drawing pad until you're happy with the spacing. There are a few other settings we can change just to make the brush feel a little bit more organic. One of those is enabling the flip Y setting in the shape menu. And this will randomly flip the brush across the Y axis. So you'll see sometimes the branch is on the left and sometimes it's on the right. And it just makes the wreath brush a little bit more organic. Next in the dynamic menu, I'm gonna actually change the size jitter and this will randomly change the size of the brush. I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit and clear the drawing pad and you'll see here that the brush size is random. I don't know if it's very clear. If you change it all the way up, you'll see the difference. But some of the branches are a little bit smaller than others and it also gives it a little bit more of an organic feel. If you look closely though, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap in between some of the branches because we've changed the size. So I'm gonna head over to the stroke path menu again and I'm actually just going to change the spacing to make sure that, I think I'm just gonna decrease this a little bit. You can also save the brush and test it out a bit on the canvas and come back and edit it later if you think that it's not quite right. Also one thing before I forget, you need to make sure that under the properties you disable orient to screen, otherwise your brush will not look right. Let's press done and see what the wreath brush actually looks like. So that's pretty good. I think I'm just going to go in and change the spacing a little bit because I'm not 100% happy with that. So I'm going to go back to stroke path and just increase it a tiny bit just so that the leaves don't overlap as much. There we go, that's a little bit better. And I'm also going to go in and change the color dynamics because this is just going to be another little unique twist to our brush to make it a little bit more organic. So I'm going to change the hue up a little bit to about 10 or 15 percent and if you zoom in you can see that the colors of the different branches are slightly different colors that's a little bit more of a sage green and that's a little bit brighter you can also change this all the way up and make a rainbow wreath wreath brush and that looks pretty that looks pretty pretty that looks quite pretty and we can also go let's turn this back down to about 15 percent and you can also turn up the saturation the lightness and the darkness just to add some more variation let's try out and see what that looks like i'm going to just undo all of this and oh now you see if i zoom in the actual branches you can see the stems and that isn't what we want because there's too much variation so i'm going to just turn down the darkness lightness and saturation and just keep the hue change and there we go i like that i like the look of that brush and that's it we've created our very own wreath brush uh, you can go ahead and make so many different variations of this i'm just going to show you some of the brushes that i've created that are in my wreath brush set there's a link below if you want to have a look at it and I, you can use different watercolors for them. You can make brushes that are more thorny looking. Uh, I've got a tinsel brush as well. This is one of my favorites that I've created and it's just got a little bit more texture in it that I haven't like colored the whole thing in. I really love that brush. And you can make a whole lot of different wreath brushes with this this tutorial and uh, this method so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial please make sure that you like it if you learned something and for more brush tutorials and other procreate videos make sure you subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week